YouTube and Google Plus getting more and more connected. It's amazing. It's what I call GooTube Plus, and it's on its way. In fact, there's a ton of things that have happened since just the beginning of this month. This month is September 2012. We're just a little bit past halfway through, and I've been posting like crazy about all the different things. So watch this video. It's going to be a brief overview of all the different things that I think are the most important that have happened since the beginning of September 2012. There's new kinds of integration that involve everybody. In other words, it's available for all. And then there's new types of integration that involves you if you have done what Google's asked you to, which means connecting your Google Plus with your YouTube channel just the way that they've asked you to. You get extra Google goodies. That's what I call it. And that is going to be something we'll look at the difference between if you made that connection and if you didn't, either way, you're still getting all kinds of new integration options that are available for us since the beginning. So let's start out with the ones that apply to everyone. First thing we're going to look at is the difference between a time code and a time stamp. This is something brand new, just introduced within the last couple of days to Google+. Plus. It's been around for a while with um, YouTube, but never before in Google+, Plus till maybe two or three days ago. So let's take a look here at the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my search environment inside Google+, Plus and I'm going to search for Seagull. So we're going to choose from here the search. We're going to refine it down to from you, meaning from me. And so there it is. This is a video of a seagull picked up a GoPro camera, flew around, and dropped it off somewhere else. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. It's a cool video, cool concept. What I wanted to do was point out a certain part of the video that I thought was kind of neat and say this is where... The camera gets put down and dropped and pecked by the bird. Look what I did here. Check out this spot down here in the comments at 0 colon 28. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and watch what happens. Did you see that? The video started playing at, let's pause for a second, at 28 seconds into the video because I started it out with what's called a time code. Okay, time codes are cool. You can add them in your main portion of your post or down here in the comments. You can even comment on other people's videos. Super cool, neat new feature. I've posted about it. Look through the video. I'll have links and all that stuff for all the different posts that I'm talking about. So what's the difference between a time code and a time stamp? Well, in the video that's part of a post, we can use what's called a time code. So right above it in the context of the main part of the post or down in your comment area, you can put in a code that when clicked, it will adjust and move that to that position in the video that's part of a post. Whereas a timestamp is more like what you're traditionally used to seeing inside Google+. And that is right near the name of the poster, just to the right of it, you're going to have what's called a timestamp. If you watch what's going on, you're inside the streams, so you'll see stuff above it, stuff below it. But if you want to focus on one particular post or go to the original part of that particular post, you just click on this particular part right here. And it takes you to that one specific post, isolated all by itself, pulls it out of the stream, and then you could do things like you can use this, you could control click or right click on it and get the link address so you can tell people this is where to find that particular post. That's one thing you can do with a timestamp. The other is just isolate it outside of the stream so you can do your editing or read through it without the stream trying to distract you and move things around. So that's what a timestamp is on a Google Plus post, and this is an example of what a time code is when it comes to using a Google Plus, Plus, Google Plus post that has a video in it. Okay, so that was timestamps and time codes and the differences between them, and those are available for everybody. So now, what do you get when you connect the dots, when you connect things the way that Google wants you to do them, and you say, I'm gonna use my real name from my profile, Google Plus profile, and stick that inside YouTube. And so I'm going to let the two connect. And that's when we get some extra Google goodies. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now. What are some of the brand new things that you get? And by the way, this does not work if you're trying to use your brand and go to a page yet that's hopefully coming soon. In fact, maybe tonight there's an update, a system maintenance update. Maybe that'll change things. But for now, let's take a look at those that have chosen, which I did, to take your channel name and rename it when the option is given to you to your profile name so that the two can connect. 
So one of the very first things that you want to see is how do you go about doing that or what's involved. So this post right here that I've got on the left that I'm circling, this is an example that shows you some screenshots of what you will see when you go through the process of connecting the two. And so actually, let's go back up here. My channel used to be named right here, Video Leads Online. I have simply renamed it to be my name, which is Ronnie Bincer. And once you go through the process, you can see it right here. It shows it to you. It's kind of cool. Look down there, you'll see the details. Or you want to check it out ahead of time before you do it, go ahead and check out that post. The next item is dealing with annotations, annotation links. Something that you've been able to do in Google or in YouTube for quite a while is add in what are called annotations and they could have been clickable which means I can click on one it'll take you from one video right over to another video which is cool but you never were able to jump off of YouTube to somewhere else unless you were going to a fundraiser site okay they've added that recently now this is a cool Google goodie if you've made the connection now they are giving us the ability to link straight from a video click on it and jump right on over to, you got it, Google Plus, our Google Plus profile and eventually our Google Plus page once they make that page kind of connection. Just a little caveat, the options are there, the menu choices are there, but when you click on it, it's not working, at least not right now. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video or soon thereafter, the clicks will work and it'll jump you over from YouTube to Google+. In fact, I'm hoping that's one of the updates that they're doing tonight. And so by tomorrow, that would be the 18th of September. I hope it to be all working, but we'll see. I've started using it already, getting it ready for the next phase of GooTube+, Plus, the YouTube Google Plus integration. So that's a Google goodie. You're going to want to check out the article to see how it works. Next, private videos. That's right, private videos. So I'm going to change my screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. I made a post here that talks about the connection now you can have between Google Plus and YouTube and privacy. In fact, it brings in Gmail in the middle of it all or some kind of an email program. So you can use the power of Google Plus to build your community, get a list of people in essence. You can make great compelling content in your videos using YouTube. And then you can connect the two inside YouTube with a new feature that's added to the private video section. Now, that was stuff that when you take and connected the YouTube and Google Plus just the way that Google wants you to do, but the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about is something that applies to everyone, whether you've connected that or not. There we go. I made a post that is talking about how do you track your own comments that you did in other people's places, you know, other people's posts, or how do you track where other people have mentioned your name? Okay, so if you're trying to figure out who's talking about you, what they're talking about, where it is, and they're doing it in the public realm, you can use this search, and this is the process to go about doing it to figure out how to track all that stuff. It's one of my most popular, I think actually it's the most popular post I've made yet. I'm not all that famous yet, but I'm working on it. And this has been shared 241 times as of this moment. Um, and this was only posted a little more than a week ago. So it's doing pretty good. As far as I'm concerned, I, I like it. It's a great tip to help you figure out where all your comments are that are outside of your own posts, as well as all the mentions are of you inside Google+. So check that one out. Next, just as a reminder, in case you're new, you might be new to Google+, you might not be new to YouTube, but maybe you're new to Google+, you might be someone coming over from Facebook, who knows, welcome. If you're trying to figure out how to do all the stuff you need to do inside Google+, you want to feel comfortable here, know what's expected of you, check out this document right there. Once you've figured out how to interact well with Google+, another area you want to really focus on is adding hashtags to your posts or your comments. So check out this particular document. It's got all kinds of activity on it. Just go ahead and read it. It's a good overview. If you're into the concept of trying to figure out how do I search well within Google Plus and find the stuff that I'm looking for, it's a great idea to add hashtags to your stuff because you can find your stuff easier that way. And the more people that do it, the easier it is for everyone to find the stuff we're looking for inside Google Plus. Hashtags, great stuff. Check it out. Okay, now, as promised, thanks for watching to the end, or hey, jump into this part. I don't know what you did, but here you are. This is the part where I talk about if you have made the best effort you can to get attention to people on, on Google+, and it's just not working for you, one of the things you need to do is connect with what are called influencers, people that have been successful in reaching out and building a crowd or an audience that follows them. 
here's a tip to help you make a good connection with influencers, and that is realize that most influencers are doing Hangouts or Hangouts on Air. Not all, but most of them. Find the ones that are that are in your space that you want to connect with. And here's a very, very powerful tip. Watch over here. What I'm suggesting is that you create basically a table of contents for their Hangout on Airs, the most recent stuff or maybe even some of the old stuff, and then send it to them. Here, add in a little bit of an introduction text, you know, a summary text of what's going on. Add in this particular timestamp that is when that particular part starts. Here's another one. There's another one. You get the idea. Hopefully you can just type that in. It's based on this format. HH for hour, MM for minutes, and SS for seconds with colons in between. And by the way, here's an extra tip. It goes past one hour. In the past, it would stop at one hour. This stuff wouldn't work before. Now it works. It works past one hour. Just go ahead and help out the influencers by giving them a summary of what was covered in the Hangout, you know, with some major topics, and give them the time codes. Send it to them as a private message. And I know for one, me, if you did that for me, I would really be thankful. And I will take that stuff, paste it into my stuff inside the Google Plus post, as well as copy it inside my YouTube description area, because it works well in both places. And that would save me a lot of time and I would really appreciate it. And most likely I will mention you in the process and that allows me to interact with you more and little by little we'll get all kinds of interaction. And that's just a good thing when you're inside Google+. There's my summary. Now just an idea. I'm going to take what I've done, practice what I preach, bring, eat my own dog food as they say. And I'm going to put in these time codes through the throughout the video to point out the different topics I'm going to put it right here inside Google Plus I'm also going to put it inside the video in YouTube okay so this is stuff that I do I post about this stuff all the time I got a question for you is this useful do you like this give it a thumbs up if you do give it a plus one share it with your friends and then in the comments let me know is this of interest to you do you want me to do more of these summaries is it good for you do you like it is it helpful? And then here's the big kicker. Would you be willing to pay for it? Is this something that you think is valuable enough to see the summary of all the stuff that I've been posting on recently? Is this something that you want? Okay, and are you willing to pay for it? Just let me know in the comments. I really appreciate it. We'll see you around Google+.